three, two, and one. Hello, hello, happy Wednesday. I'm just like, it's almost the end of February. I hope you guys had a wonderful Valentine's Day. And I also hope that you've been seeing the Master Your Destiny that we've been putting out each week to just help you take on these tools and these tips for yourself. So you can really master your life. You can get through these different areas. You can allow yourself to focus on the changes you want to have in your life and practice these tools with yourselves. So today we are going to be talking about, hey there, Peter, good to see you, darling. We're going to be talking about how you can allow yourself to be even more insightful and you can practice it each and every day because as you do that, it gives you the opportunity to really to become aware of different, both strengths and weaknesses that we can be really mindful of. And so you might say, well, how can there be weaknesses? Well, it's pretty interesting that you actually can find different weaknesses in being too insightful. And you might go, wait, what? <laughs> well, that's the same thing. I Then as I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, okay, no, 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 that totally makes sense. And, and I, I researched these different things to help uh, both myself as well as you. Um, there's also going to be an ebook at the end of these 10 weeks that I've been going over these things with you guys. So please do look out for that. And if you'd like it, um, it's going to be at the early bird price of $6.99. Um, so you'll be able to review the ebook, go over questions, give me your feedback too, because I want to actually continue to edit it and grow it and have a second edition with it. So what I want to review with you first are the different points, and then I'd like to do a walking meditation with you to kind of take in these points and practice this insightfulness for yourself. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the strengths first. And then as you're, you're thinking about that, then we can also take a look at the weaknesses and you can apply them into how you want to make this practice work for the meditation. And we'll go over it in more detail. Thank you guys so much for the hearts. I appreciate it. Okay. So when we're being insightful, it could be things like, it's really important to keep your mission and your vision in your forefront. Taking a minute, to five minutes every day, taking a look at what your mission and your vision is for the year, right? And it may be exactly what your overall mission and vision is. Now, this works as a business owner, this works as a as um, somebody who has been retired and you're just looking at what is it you wanna do for your health, your wellness, your relationships, your life, your hobbies. So it doesn't have to be just business, but we'll use some of these examples uh, to kind of walk through. So for example, if you're allowing yourself to look at this different mission and vision for your life or your business, you're like, okay, I am right on track. I love this. Or where I thought I wanted to be isn't quite it. I want to take it to the next level. Or I was putting too much expectation on myself. I didn't allow myself to plan for all the steps that were needed. So that's where sometimes we can either strengthen ourselves or we can weaken ourselves because we can put too much on ourselves if we're not paying attention to all that we're putting on. And, you know, it's human nature. We tend to, to maybe not plan for the timing that we want to. We may find ourselves with different things coming up in life and we have to give ourselves some leniency for when life throws something our way and then we have to add something to our plate or take it off. And that allows us then to be able to take a look at the root issue and then go, oh, okay, I can make this change here. And it does it in complete freedom. It does it in remove it, uh, removing of any judgment. And it allows you to be kind and forgiving with yourself, your time, and what you thought it should be, right? It removes that on yourself. The other thing is it helps you to see, oh, this is just about making a decision, right? I can just weigh the pros and cons. I can just see the things that I need to do for myself. And it also helps you to get more in line with your intuition. What's going to be best for me, right? And that grows. That's actually something that you can strengthen. A lot of times people might say, my intuition is not really that great. I work with a lot of clients that say that up front. And as we continue to do work together, they're like, I can, I can hear it more. I'm totally getting in connection with that. I'm starting to trust myself more. It's just a practice, okay? The other thing is it keeps you in communication both with yourself and others. 
if you choose to make sure to keep that insightfulness of, okay, I need to keep them in the loop. I just need to let them know this is what I've been doing. They don't have to be all up in your business, right? They don't have to know the flavor of your Kool-Aid, but it allows them to be able to say, oh, well, they're letting me know what's going on. I want to let them know what's going on. It creates that team both at, in your business as well as at home, right? It helps your partner to go, oh, they always just let me know what's going on with them. I always feel like I'm in the loop, right? Or I, I totally understand what's going on for them. So I have compassion with what they're feeling and thinking. They're just sharing things with me. They're keeping me in that same path with them. And then the other thing which our brain loves because it's juicy is it helps us to keep learning and keep growing. It helps us to keep looking within ourselves, right? When we're being insightful, we're allowing ourselves to be mindful of these particular things. And when we go through our meditation walk, you'll see you can be mindful on a piece of grass. You can be insightful on things that you wouldn't even think. And it allows you also to take a look at what's working and what's not working. So you can learn from your mistakes and you can see your mistakes as an opportunity to adjust, not an opportunity to beat yourself up or to do the same thing with somebody else. It allows you to get a deeper insight on yourself. What if we are only here to have this journey to learn and grow and be our best self? What if that's what we're here for? I think that's what we're here for. <laughs> this difference. I am strengthening myself. I'm using these tools. I'm trusting my intuition. My insight is strengthening my being. I hope that sounds good. And I do hope that if you have any questions about this, you let me know. I'd love to hear how, yeah, I see I'm doing that. Or how can I do this more? Or I don't see that I'm enough in this area. What do you suggest? Ask me any question. There is no stupid question at all. The only one I, I like to say, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask because it can't ever be informed, right? Okay, so you might ask, okay, so where can insightfulness be a weakness? Analysis paralysis. <laughs> number one. That's my number one. <laughs> I can get so stuck on all the information. It leads me to overthinking things. It leads me to, well, is this the best? Is that the best? I don't know. Let me find out this. Let me find out that. And I'm becoming too focused on the information. And so it's kind of important to kind of back it up one thought at a time, one step at a time, one action at a time. And oftentimes you might notice, which I have to notice with myself, I see something as a task when it's actually a project. I see it as one thing, but it's actually 10 separate steps. And I have to break it down. I, I have this mantra of one step at a time. What's the next thing I have to do? That's it. What is the next thing I have to do? And is it going to get me to that completed task? And if the answer is no, then that tells me there's more than just one thing. And that's a project, not a task. Even if it's three steps instead of one, it's still a project of three versus just one. Make sense? So that, that's my biggest one. I don't know. What's your biggest one? Where do you find that your insightfulness may bring in a weakness for you? Let me know. Let me know how it comes up. And you might say, oh, yeah, it's totally overthinking. Where, where do you find yourself overthinking? Where do you see that that's blocking you from moving in your relationship with your hobbies, um, with the things that you love in your life, with family, um, maybe going on a vacation? Where is it showing up? Allow yourself to take a look at that. Let me know. I'd like to see. And then the other thing, sometimes we just get stuck in being right, right? So I can be stuck in, I think I'm right, and I'm looking up information, or I'm researching, or I'm asking questions, but I'm asking the question something, guys. I do want to share with you a, um, a program. It's called Chat GPT. I'm part of a group, and the host is really amazing. He knows how to use this um, program. And... You can actually research this stuff for yourself on ChatGPT, right? When I'm doing, when I was doing research, I'd be into this article and that article and this resource and that resource and da, da, da. And now it's narrowed down my research time as I'm looking into it and it can tell me where the references come from. So we are going to be doing a meeting uh, March 13th and I want to invite you for that ChatGPT. If you're interested, text in the comments, definitely chat GPT, and I'll make sure to invite you. And, and I like it because he doesn't go over your head, maybe a little, 
um, if you're brand new or maybe a little in some areas that like he talks about how it helps with code. It writes legal documents. It writes all kinds of stuff. And oh my gosh, it's like having an assistant or a legal advisor or a therapist. You know, of course, it's not um, it's not licensed or certified. Right. So you need to make sure that you do talk to your own therapist if you're looking into anything in mental health. But it gives you some basics and stuff to look up. It's really cool. Okay, so we were just talking about confirmation bias. Now I'm going to be shifting into arrogance. Now, arrogance doesn't have to be like so noticeable, like, oh, I know everything. Arrogance could just be like, yeah, I already know that. And so then we're coming from that place of overconfidence. We're coming from that place of not really listening to somebody else and to their thoughts because we just think that we know because our insight is just insight to what we know. So it can allow us to see, oh my gosh, my insight can have some weaknesses in it. There are some times when somebody says they told me something and I didn't hear that at all. Mm, I've been there. <laughs> and I've had many clients that I often will have to stop and say, tell me what you think I'm saying. And then they tell me and I'm like, mm, let's start again because this is what I'm saying. Now tell me exactly what I said. And then they have to catch and go, whoa, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Pretty cool, right? Okay, and then the last one is just stress. Sometimes if we're so stressed, we're in this emotional state, high blood pressure, too self-critical with ourselves, too self-aware, and you might find yourself losing confidence in your abilities, questioning everything, right? And I've been there too. <laughs> And that's why I do the work that I do, because I want to be able to give this information. I want to be able to give this new insight so we could have an additional insight. So now that we have that information, let me get a drink of water. And we're going to go for our meditation walk with this new information. Allow yourself for a moment. Take in a nice deep breath. Connect in with your body. Use the insightfulness that you know about what you want with this information. Use your insightfulness and let in the changes that you were just becoming aware of and more things that we can learn when we're researching, more things that we can take advantage of as we're growing. Allow yourself to do that now. And I'm gonna turn up my volume. So if you can hear the birds, just notice the sounds. If you can hear mine, there's birds chirping, different ones, one to the left, one to the right. You can hear some knocking. Just notice as you're connecting to that focus. Connecting to how are you going to use your insight differently moving forward. Using your eyes, seeing the trees, the grass, the sky. Take a nice deep breath in, breathe in the air. And whether you want to notice where I'm walking or imagine a beautiful place. Connecting. How can I be more insightful in a way that strengthens my insight? And open up my insight. So if there's any weakness, give yourself that permission. To just be in the moment, bringing all of your senses. Just noticing the beauty in life. Think about a leaf. A leaf that you've seen, beautiful colors, holding it in your hand. Is it green? Oh look, leaf just fell. <laughs> Is it green? Is it soft and smooth? Is it cool? The smooth texture on the top, the coarse texture on the bottom. 
the ridges. Notice the sound it may make when you touch it. Smell it might have. Smell of life. Earthy. Little fibers. Notice how deep you can go into focusing on something. Being in the moment. Relaxing. Letting your mind feel that peace and calm. Just being in the moment. Taking in a nice deep breath. Breathing it all in. Filling up your lungs. Stretching your esophagus. And then slowly breathing out. Breathe all the way out until there's no air left. You feel your stomach squeezing. Hold that a second. And then breathe. And whether you're walking with me or imagining it, think of the leaves crunching under your feet. And you still feel the birds chirping. The crow in the distance saying hello. The horn of the semi truck miles away. Imagine the wisdom, the time that's been in every tree, the life force, and everything around you. Noticing the smell of the air, the coolness, the warmth of the sun, beautiful colors in the sky. Allowing yourself to be open to bringing this peace, this tranquility into every aspect of your being the very cells, to the very DNA of your body, your mind, your spirit, and notice how you are strengthening yourself. Taking in another deep breath, only this is going to be a double breath. You'll breathe in. And as you're holding your breath, you'll take in another breath. And then when we breathe out, we'll breathe out nice and slow. Breathing in. And another breath. Hold. And slowly out. All the way out again until you feel your belly pushing in. So there's no air left. Hold and then breathe. And just notice what you've allowed for your mind, your body, as you continue to relax. Notice that you've released the stress in your body. Notice that you've connected with nature in this very moment. Notice you let go of any concerns of the past, the future, Realizing in your actions that there is only now. You calmed your central nervous system. You brought up the level of your parasympathetic. You brought down the level of your sympathetic system. You brought up your insight, your wisdom, your connection. You grew in knowledge. You grew in opening up your mind and your ability. You did all of that and so much more. Write down the things that you feel like you got out of today, that you saw you got out of today, that you heard you got out of today. And just notice the list keeps growing. 
there's so much more. The connection within yourself, the self-love. You're pouring that into yourself. Overflow into the rest of your day. See how it affects others. See how you are making a difference in your world as you're starting within you. You so deserve it. I look forward to connecting with you guys. I'm here every week. Please make sure that you continue to give yourself permission to take this short time to love on yourself, to learn, to grow. And just know that I'll continue to be here as that's just what I'm about. And if you find that you really love this stuff and you'd like to work with me more, you can always reach out to me and we can chat. Um, you can find me at sparkspoke.life forward slash book dash online. And I always love to help you grow. We always love to help you continue to shift any negative thoughts, any negative habits, anything that's in your way. You don't need it. You get to grow your life. You get to grow your business. You get to grow your hobbies. You get to grow in your connection with your family, your loved ones. You get to have the life that you deserve, the business that you deserve, the family that you deserve. And there's just often times